So Rod Drury from Zero. So what's the background? Yeah, so you know, I've, obviously I've done a whole lot of things things before. What we're doing with Zero, which is different though, is we were able to sort of tell people to back our track record and put money in at the start of the business and get 50 smart New Zealanders to build something which is really cool. So we're doing um, online accounting for small businesses, which we think is one of the you know, hugest markets in the world. If you think about sort of market size, you've probably got all blades of grass, <laughs> then you've got um, all consumers, and then all small businesses. And it's one of those spaces where um, there's a technology change happening. We're moving from installed desktop software, where the business processes are around being uh, ha having you with your own data, but not able to share it easily with other people, to you know, how does the internet change all that? So we're seeing this massive transformation. Uh, we haven't seen any of the um, incumbent players in the last generation move credibly into the space. So we've been able to uh, put the resources in place to have 50 smart New Zealanders, and we're starting to build a significant business. So now you've got a public company. Craig Neville Manning mentioned before about Kiwis most often just self-funding and going on a little proposition. You've bitten off the big chunk, gone to get the big money and made a public company. Has that been something you intended on doing? Um, it wasn't when I did, did, did my last company. So the last one I did was an email company uh, called Aftermail, and we self-funded it, you know, you sort of wind your mortgage down, all that normal way of starting a business. And you finally get to a certain point where um, you have a choice. You either go in and, and, and uh, raise money uh, through VCs, which can be quite hard, um, and then you have to go again, all those sort of things, or, or a trade sale. We saw a pattern there that there were sort of mid-size um, US public companies that were doing an R&D acquisition model. So with Aftermail, we saw that pattern and built a business to be bought. And what that gave us was a, some great experience, and um, it gave us the credibility to do what we really wanted to do. But it was only after we sold the business, and I saw the chief executive of Quest, when he was standing up, he was telling a much bigger story. And suddenly, for me, the next goal became, I actually want to, I would love to have a long-term company. And, and what you realize in the software space is you can't really separate your funding strategy from your business strategy all comes together and it's kind of the next step so quite, you know quite quickly hatched up you know we should definitely do zero as a public company because that gives us the best chance to build a long-term business from New Zealand. So what are the big challenges and opportunities in this industry? Um, well the, in terms of the high-tech industry the biggest one is still funding and um, and unfortunately you kind of have to have the track record you know when you almost you don't need the funding then you can get it but that, ena uh, that, that enabled us to do what we're doing. I mean, the hardest thing we will ever do at zero was the IPO and now we've got that we can then you know backfill the strategy with really smart people so cash makes things happen so I hope I hope what will happen and I think it's starting to happen is that as we're proving ourselves you know we just announced um, you know, uh, 12 months ago we had 950 customers, we um, had uh, 3,000 customers at the beginning of the, of the year, in three months we've now doubled to 6,000 customers. So we put that platform in for scale and we're proving it's working. So now we're finding that people are actually saying, hey you guys, you know, you've put a big story but you've actually made it happen and that should allow, and that should make it easier for other small companies to get the money in at the start. Because, you know, we all know we can build good technology, you can build good, te good uh, if you had the resources, you get the right uh, people uh, to sell it, but it all depends on that capital. So we take this really um, quite seriously. We think our responsibility in the New Zealand industry is to be staggeringly successful to free up access to capital or get access to capital uh, to a bunch of uh, small startups. So building a world-class business from New Zealand but taking it to the world, is that something that's getting easier, do you think? Um, well, yeah. Um, you know, now with uh, the internet, not for all businesses, but if you look at what the technology now allows you to do, building scalable businesses, and we have a lot of experience in that, you know, inside the uh, New, Zealand, um, uh, New Zealand network and in the, you know, the New Zealand software scene, we've seen TradeMe, a, a spectacular business where we saw what happens when servers run the business. So now we can take that, you know, the software as a service wave, whether it be enterprise software as a service, whether it be um, uh, consumer stuff or the small business stuff that we're doing, is a huge opportunity for us because it's all about brains. Your brains write software and it's not just the software to uh, solve the business problem, the software is running the whole business. So that allows you to really, really scale. And we're, and we're taking a chocolate out of every box. Like we did some, some metrics on, on a typical um, US uh, SaaS, if you can say the typical one, there's about 40 US SaaS companies, and we, we tracked how much money they raised before an IPO, and it turned out to be, uh, the average was about 40 million US. We did an IPO, you know, on our first million bucks sort of thing. So, you know, we're, we're, we're even doing that business model completely differently, and it's working for us. So do you think New Zealand's going to enter in this next stage of the world economy, lean and mean, potentially with an advantage, or...? 
Well, the thing I'm, I'm really hot on, the, the obvious thing that we can change right now is our international broadband. You know, at the moment, you know, if you think about if we, um, you know, people don't do high resolution video conferencing, we don't have New York phone numbers, all those things that, that the technology would provide because um, of the way that broadband's priced. So, so I think the big thing and one of the themes I've been talking about at the conference here is that the international uh, broadband is our most important thing. We have an opportunity, relatively inexpensively, to drive it to a cost plus basis where effectively any New Zealand company can uh, then um, communicate in a high resolution way to anyone in the world. But then once we have that, we can go out on the other side and do deals to say, you know, if, you know, we're looking at say, say we want to hire a, a marketing person in San Francisco, 150,000 US. That same person, if there was high speed, you know, low cost broadband internationally, could be 140,000 Kiwi and go mountain biking at night. So, so the, the idea of you know being able to connect ourselves digitally to the world and just change the game, to me, is absolutely intoxicating. And we've put a lot of effort into um, you know get that on the government. Agenda. And so how have you built your global infrastructure? Have you actually got people based offshore in countries? Yeah, yeah, we do. So ours is a mix. We've got a hybrid model, so we're using a lot of, uh, and you'll see more of this over the next year, we're doing all the Web 2.0 stuff up, which is really low cost, and basing it down in New Zealand. And then we're taking a very scalable uh, sales approach by investing not so much in sort of end marketing spend, which could be a lot of money, but um, we're, um, you know, we're getting really great people that can go out and do deals. So, um, uh, you know, we, we did the telecom deal here, you know, we're in the front page of the Herald today. Telecom spent their money to pull our brand through, so we created value for them doing that. Um, uh, we're, we've just, uh, we're just announcing today we've won Telstra in Australia. So um, rather than us going and spend a whole lot of money just trying to yeah. build a brand, we've taken a piggyback strategy. So it's low cost, it's investing in people, not just in, in the server runs the business, but how do you build a marketing strategy which is inherently low cost and scalable as well. So we're thinking about all these new business models, you know, and um, you know, we, we don't have any servers, they're all hosted with um, Rackspace in Texas. You know, these are, these are, you can build these global businesses now really, really quite easily and it's staggering how, how much business has changed. So public markets are hard to access now, and in New Zealand maybe you could say they've always been hard to access, but you've gone an IPO to business. Is this something we're going to see more of in the future? I think when we're seen to be successful, um, I, I think yes, and it could be that the New Zealand Stock Exchange could, that could be what it does. It, is a, it's a, it gives um, young companies the experience of being a public company. You know, once you're in the New Zealand Stock Exchange, it's relatively easy to get into the Australian Stock Exchange. I was uh, chatting... Um, out of Neville Jordan, who's one of the few New Zealanders that's taken a company up on onto uh, the Nasdaq, when um, you know his story was, um, you know, he talked to people in New Zealand about it, said it was all too hard. He, um, you know, phoned up directory services in the US, got through to the Nasdaq guy, found there was a VP of international business development who was delighted to take his call and made the process really easy. So I think you know, in New Zealand, we're not scared to go out and and um, sort of push the boat out and just make things happen. Thanks a lot, Rod. Appreciate your time. Great, thanks, Tim. Cheers, mate.